Good afternoon, viewers. Um, <clears throat> today, we're going to be treating a very interesting subject. But before we go straight into the subject, uh, we're going to pray, you know, and seek God's guidance as we go into it. Father God, we just want to thank you this, this afternoon. We want to honor you. We want to exalt your name because you're a good God. You are awesome, worthy to be praised. As we go into your word today, we ask of you that you should touch the hearts and mind of the speaker and at the same time, touch the hearts and minds of the hearer. Today, we want you to make an impact in our life, very notable impact in our life, that your name will be honored through the words that will come out of my, my mouth today. So at the end, your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So today, we're going to be talking about an important subject, and this subject is prayer. Prayer. You see, that there are few things that are so important in the body of Christ to believers, those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. The three of them, I'm going, to me I'm going to mention about four of them today, but I'm going to deal with specifically prayer and fasting, how important that is in the body of Christ. Now, the things that are so important on the whole, we should be like a lifestyle are as follows. The word of God, prayer and fasting, you know, and uh, worshiping, you know. And th those things are so important, you know, worshiping is in terms of praises and all of it. But I'm going to narrow down on fasting and prayer today because this is what we're going to be dealing with this afternoon. So I, prayer is so important that it cannot be underestimated in the body of Christ. You know, I can go into a church and find out if the church is a prayerful church or not a prayerful church. It's so easy to find out. Now, but what, uh, let, let's, take, let's take it turn by turn. First of all, I want to talk about Jesus. You know, the man that we serve, that we, the, the, the Lord that we serve, that we believe in. When he came to this earth, before the beginning of his ministry, the first thing he did was went into fasting and prayer for 40 days and 40 nights. If you look at the book of Matthew chapter, chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, that is how he started his ministry. You know, if you look at it, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Then uh, it reads us. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. Well, all, all I want to talk about is how he started his ministry. The first thing is that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights with prayer. And that was the beginning of his ministry. So what does that tell us, all believers? That it is important that we need to spend time with God in terms of prayer and fasting. It should be a lifestyle to every believer. Prayer and fasting should be a lifestyle to every believer. I remember years ago, I want to give you a story. Years ago, uh, <clears throat> I had, uh, have given this before, but I want to give it again. And just to, you know, expatiate on that subject of prayer. Years ago, I was in Europe, in Austria, and we were in a church. We have uh, a prayer meeting, and uh, we were praying for the church. As we were praying that night, we prayed from the hour of 12 midnight to 6 a.m. We were praying hour by hour. Just keep your time in, in prayer, serious prayer, for the church. Not for me, but for the church. Now, the Lord did something very unique on that day in my life. For many years, I have been looking for a visa to go to London where my parents actually live. I could not go to London. I started this journey way back in the 70s. I could not. So I decided to go to other part of Europe. Now, Austria was one of them. 
So I was in Austria. Uh, meanwhile, while I was looking for the visa, there were a lot of things that happened. They had refused me the visa to go to London, and there have been uh, situations where we have to actually sue the, uh, the embassy. A lot of conflict. And then at that point, what happened? They still refused me the visa. So I forgot about London. I was not thinking about London the day we went to prayer that day. So, but as we're praying, we pray all night, and the Lord spoke to me in a vision and told me that my son, that the, the door to London is not open. Now you can go. Wow. So what I did was that I got myself together, and I got a ticket without a visa, with the same passport that has been marked, you know, that I've applied for a visa and I've re been refused that visa, the same passport, I boarded the plane, uh, the train, down to, to London. In faith. You know, so God does answer prayer. Most of the time, why do we pray? We are not praying to please God, but to help ourselves. Prayer is for us. It's not for God. God does not need our prayers, but it's to help us. So that's what happened that day. And that was a remarkable victory in my life. I, w I went to London. My parents, very unsure, when they saw me at the door, they were, they were surprised. They, they ran back, and they came back. You know, they knocked on the door again, and they finally came, how did you make it? And I explained to them that we were praying in the church when the Lord spoke to me that the doors to London have been opened. And immediately I went, I bought a ticket the next day, and I decided to board the train, and on my way to London, I go. So prayer works. Works fasting and prayer is a very important tool in the body of Christ to help us, number one, our, ourselves, and at the same time, you know, to help the body of Christ. You know, we, there's nothing we can do for him. Our prayer is not for him, but to help ourselves, to, to get us closer to him, one, you know, to be, you know, talk to him like a heavenly father, you know, uh, like you talk to your early, uh, early father, you know, request the things you want. He said, ask and that shall be given. Knock and the doors will be open. You know, and seek and that shall find. That's what the Bible says. So it's important that we have to, even though God knows our heart desires, he still requires us to pray from time to time, to ask before he gives to us. Amen. So now let, let's begin to explain this. So, so now I kind of relate my situation to that of Peter. We know about the, that favorite uh, chapter in uh, Acts of Apostles chapter 12, verses 1. I'm going to read it to you what happened in that place. Acts of Apostles chapter 12 from verse 1. Now, after that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to the verse setting of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squadrons of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now note this verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. Listen to that word. Without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And how did the, the church woke up to this? Now, let me explain a few things. They were surprised, the church was surprised that James was beheaded. It, they were so surprised. It took them unaware. And when they apprehended Peter, they now said to themselves, how can we allow this to happen? 
The church gathered together and they decided to go into fasting, into prayer, serious prayers. And they prayed. They prayed in the house while, while Peter was in, in jail. The Bible said they prayed without ceasing. Without ceasing. And as they prayed, what happened? And when Herod would, would have brought him forth, verse 6, when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping. Now, let me repeat that. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two, with two chains. And the keepers, before the doors, the dog kept the prison. Now, verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and light shine in the prison, and he smit Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell out of his hands. The Bible says the chains, immediately what happened is that as they were offering the prayer, the church was offering the prayer on behalf of Peter, the Lord listened, the Lord answers prayer. As you can see, what happened in here is that the Lord now, Send an angel into the prison. Behold, what happened in the prison that you know in a prison is thoroughly very secured. The reason is that there are hard criminals that are being kept in prison. But in this case, Peter was not a criminal. But because they had actually succeeded in killing James and the people were happy, now he decided to advance to kill Peter. And the reason he wanted to kill Peter, because he see that the people were pleased when he killed James. Now, what happened in here that they prayed, the church took it upon themselves and they went into prayer and fasting and they prayed, prayed seriously in the, in, in, on behalf of Peter. And as they prayed, the Lord now sent help. The Lord sent help. Sent an angel down there and the angel got there. What the angel did was that he showed light in the whole prison. Now, remember the place is securely locked, but how the angel got into the prison, nobody know how. But one thing I know is that the Bible recorded that when they were coming out, as a tap Peter, the chains, they fell apart. So I don't know what you are going through today. I'm here to tell you that as just as it is that when Peter, the chains around Peter were broken, a lot of people, they still walk with chains in their lives. Their legs are chained down and they, they walk, though they walk, it seems like they run a circle. Uh, though they, they move around, uh, they seem like they're not getting anywhere because they are chained with the burdens of this world uh, in their hands, in their legs. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that God is here to deliver you today. Today is your hour of deliverance. Whatever that you're going through, the chains that are tie you there, so that you cannot achieve today a decree that in the name of Jesus those chains be broken in the name of Jesus as they were broken as the angels taught them and they were broken that day I decreed that those chains in your life that are keeping you behind that are making you unable to make a strive that are making you unable to achieve today I decree that God will break those chains that you will no longer be shaken down by your enemies amen now, that, but what happened in this case is that when, when they got to the door, the Bible, could you imagine what would have been happening when the angels, when the angels were, were right there inside the, uh, when the, 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 the prisoners, the, those, the guard around the prison were there. Because the Bible said that there were two of them that were kept with him. Now, kept with Peter. Now, those guards, I don't know what happened to them, but one thing I can assure you is that what happened to them is that they were either put to sleep, or they could not stand the light that was around Peter. And Peter did not even know that the angels had come until Peter came out of the door. The, the doors, they were all open. As the angel and Peter passes through the door, the chains and the door, they were broken. And then Peter, uh, Peter and the angel, they walked through the door. So that is to tell you that when, they were, when the angel was coming in, the doors were securely locked. So they were locked, and the angels were able to come in and took care of Peter. And then as they were going out, the doors opened in their own accord. I pray that doors that have been shut around you, today God will open them. That every disturbing spirit in your life, that God will unloosen it. That you will be set free from all of that. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, what happened in here is that they brought him out, and they, when they got to the house of Rhoda, uh, the house of uh, Mary, because Rhoda was Nemeth in the house. Now, what happened in there is that when they got in there, Rhoda came to answer the door as Peter knocked on the door. And he came in, they went right back because she was excited. She was shocked. Here they are praying and prayers have already been answered. God has already sent dispatch an angel to come through, to come and take absolute control of the whole environment. Is our God is awesome. So if you're not keen into prayer, I'm here to tell you, challenge you today. Wherever you are, which, whatever church you go to, key in into prayer groups. Uh, key in, be an intercessor. Every believer should be an intercessor. It should be a lifestyle. Prayer should be a lifestyle. Before you set off from your home every day, you should spend time to pray, to communicate with your God, to speak to your God about your need, uh, to speak to your God about, uh, talk, even talk to God, God, use me to touch the life of somebody today. Could just be that prayer you make. And you'll be amazed what God can do. Now, that, that is what happened that day. So you can see, God answers prayer. It's, it, it's, he answers prayer. Now I want to take you down to, to a few, few verses today that we're going to take a look at as how important prayers are. Let's look at the book of Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. From verse 14, we see what happened in this incident. Right here. Yeah, chapter 9, verse 14. And when he came to his disciple, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, running to him, saluted him. That's when they saw Jesus. And he asked the scribe, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto him, unto thee, my son, which had a dumb spirit. And whatsoever he taketh him, he cheered him, and he foameth and garnished with his teeth, and pined away. And I spoke to and I speak to the disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. Could you imagine that? Now, here they were all gathered together, a great multitude of people, they all gathered together. As they gather together, the Bible describes it very clear. As they gather together, the apostles, they brought a, a, a child that is, that is uh, possessed with a dumb spirit. And they put it in the feet of the apostles so that they can pray, so that they can cast out that dumb spirit. But the Bible recorded that while they were there praying, they could not cast out that dumb spirit. They prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing could happen. But I'm here to tell you, <laughs> prayer works. But the thing is that the, you've got to know how to tap. Tap it. You've got to know how to pray. You've got to, you've got, you've got to get into it. Uh, even from you, as, you, as you leave your home daily, you've got to be filled with, with you got to fill yourself up with prayer. You've got to get down into prayer. You know, spend some time with the Lord. The apostles were not. They were so comfortable because Christ was with them. But later, when Christ left, they begin to learn how to how to pray, how to how to use how to how to use the things, the tools that Christ taught them. Now, in this case, they tried and they could not cast away this child, uh, this uh, this uh, dumb spirit out of this child. Now, what happened here? Let's go a little further and see what happened. He answered, he answered him, and said, "O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you?" How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straight away the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground. And wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came, out, came into him? Since this came unto him. And he said, Of a child. And often in time, it has cast him into the fire 
and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Then Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straight away, the father of the child cried out and said, With tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. When Jesus saw, when Jesus saw that the, the people came running together, he rebuked the full spirit, saying unto him, That dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him so and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many says he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, after Christ had done all of this, took the child, rebuked the spirit, the spirit came out of the child, dumb spirit came out of the child. And then they now called Christ in, say, look, master, we've been doing this thing. How come you just came and you just did it and the thing just happened? And Christ answered, listen to this. And he said unto them, this kind can comfort by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Only by prayer and fasting. He says, so, so this kind of spirit can only be cast out by prayer. You see, this opportunity is given to every believer because the Lord said, greater works you will do if you believe in him than he has done. The Bible declared that. So we are able to do a whole lot. When we went to, to Mozambique, the Lord, not just Mozambique, we seen the Lord move by power of prayer. We spent, before we go to these missions, we spent time in prayer with the Lord for days. And then when we go to the mission, there is manifestation. Manifestation. And that manifestation is uh, usually great. Great. If you get some time, check on our website, www.kingdombasedministry.org. You will see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real and it's wonderful in all things. A, 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 a church, a church without a, a prayerless church, we not, not, cannot achieve much. It's so important that churches need to key in into prayer exclusively. What I mean to, the, to, the, to, to a high extreme. Prayer is the key. It's the key to moving things, moving things and making things work. When we get to Mozambique, what happened is that the people were slain by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was, there was a movement of the Holy Spirit in the house. People, the demons were cast out. People were getting healed, getting delivered. You know, things were just happening. And not just the first time. And this opportunity is also, you have you can do the same thing, exactly the same that Christ did in here. You are able to do it if you are a believer. It is not limited to only some people, but we need to jar up in prayer. We need to pray up. We need to go into fasting. We need to, we need to get down into the word of God. The word of God. Those things are, are very important things. So now what happened in here? So that's what happened. So I want to take you down to a few things. I'm going to show you a couple of things here in the, in the scripture that will, uh, will also you will identify with. Let's look at the ba a book of Mark chapter 9. Uh, Acts of Apostles, I'm sorry. Acts chapter 9, verse 39 through 40. And Peter arose and went with them and he was, when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping. Now, this is Dorcas here. Now, the, the, the Dorcas died, the lady that was giving, giving out a lot of alms. And then they called Peter. And now when, they, when Peter got in there, this is what happened. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was, uh, was come, 
they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the all the, the widows stood by him, weeping and showing and showing the coats and garments which Doc has made while he while she was alive. Now let's go to 40. But Peter put them all forth and knelt down and prayed. Listen to this. And prayed and turning, turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. So you, can you see that? Peter knelt down and prayed. And after that, he spoke to the dead. And the dead rise up. So there's nothing God cannot do. Prayer works. Prayer works. I, I, you know, in one of my meetings, I, I had, uh, had an opportunity to minister to somebody who have uh, a tumor. And this lady has scheduled her appointment. This, this was Saturday. The revival was, was Saturday in Capitol Heights. This, this uh, lady has scheduled already her, her, her operation, which was supposed to take place. Um, how did they call it? Uh, operation, yes. With the doctor the following Monday of that Saturday. In fact, I did not know this lady before. I know this, the, the cousin of this lady. So what happened was that the lady now, uh, they call, I, call, I call her, or she called me, yeah, she called me. And um, she, because the sister told her about me. And now when she called me, I told her I'm in Capitol Heights, we're doing a revival, that it should, she should come over. So she came. She did not even tell me that she had this problem. So after preaching that day, I was calling a healing line to minister to the people. As I was praying for the people, she came and she said she had a tumor. Oh, you have a tumor? I said, yes. So I prayed, I prayed with her that day. Lay hands on her. <clears throat> after laying hands on her, she left. She called me the Monday from the doctor's office. That there's something I did not tell you, Pastor. I said, what is it? He said, today I had scheduled my operation, two more operation, with the doctor. And now I'm with the doctor. And the doctor said they did not find any tumor anymore. That is wonderful. That, that prayer works. They could not find the tumor. What a wonderful testimony. And this is not just one. There are several of them. I remember a lady calling from New Jersey. Now, they went, the daughter was almost at the point of death. The granddaughter. The granddaughter, what was happening is that there was supposed to be transmission of, uh, of blood in the body of the, of the daughter. Now, the daughter refuses the transmission. The body refuses any blood transmission. Nobody refused. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But that's what they told me. And she called me that at 3 a.m. When she called me, I almost never pick up the phone. But that day, for one reason, I picked it up anyway. When I picked it up, then she said, look, this is my dilemma. They were crying. They could not even explain themselves as to what was happening. Then I said to them, I said, look, listen to me. Let's pray about the situation and let's see what God can do. So we prayed at 3 a.m. from my house on the phone. And then what happened to that lady, uh, to that little child? Immediately after the prayer, about an hour later, they called me back. That now the child have not accepted the, 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 the blood trans, uh, you know, uh, transmission. Wow, so th that prayer works. Not just situations like that. I have ministered to people from here down to Canada who call me on the phone who have stomach problems, serious stomach problems. And they could not, they, they, the problem was so much that they could not move. When they gave me a call and, and, uh, and I told them, I said, okay, get some little water in your hand. They got water in their hand and I, I did a prayer for them, prayer of faith. After I prayed for them, they said this, they, there was movement of the vow. Immediately, as I was praying for them, they were throwing up all over the place. And immediately, the stomach pain was gone. There are also situations from New York. 
They call on the phone. And this is, this is what God is doing. God is able to use you out there to do miracles, signs, and wonder. To touch lives of people in a very unique way to relieve their pain. Because the thought, of, the thought of God towards us is good to bring about an expected end. Our God is a compassionate God. A God who is ever merciful. And he, he's taught for us are forever good. Good. So prayer works. Prayer do works. Now, so those are situations. Now, what happened in here? Now, Peter turned and spoke to the dead body. And the dead body listened immediately. And work right up. Now I'm going to take you then to a very important chapter. So we, 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 we go to, let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 9 verse 28. You know when you speak to some of uh, some pastors, they don't understand. Some of them say, well, uh, the prayers was not done in the New Testament after Christ. There was pray, a lot of prayers after Christ. A lot of it. But I want to tell you a couple of few things here. Mark, uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 28. Verse 28. Okay. And it came to pass about an eight day after these things, after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. Into the mountain to pray. There's something that is very unique about mountains in the scripture. <laughs> when people go to the mountain, they're there to pray. Now, Jesus was not an exemption. He took Peter, James, and, uh, and John with him. And they went to the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the Bible said, the fashion of his continence was altered. And his remnant was white. And glistering, verse 30. And behold, there talk with two, with him, two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his deceased, which he should accomplish, accomplish at Jerusalem. Verse 32. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto, unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Eli Elias, not knowing what he was saying. Why? What happened in here? It's during the prayer section that the atmosphere was changed, transformed. Prayer changes the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere. As they were praying in that mountain, things changes. Now they saw Christ in his glory, in his glory, full glory. And they saw Elijah and, uh, and Moses visiting to talk to him about what he was about to go through. That was a matter of transfiguration. So the thing is that prayer is the key. Is the, is the key. It transforms things, the environment. If you pray hard, the thing is that if you notice those people that God uses very much to perform miracles, signs, and wonder, the first thing they do before they set out for the activity, they soak themselves in prayer, fasting. They pray for a period of time and they have intersexuals praying on their behalf. So when they get to the field, there's manifestation. Manifestation. Prayer is the key. So, that is exactly what happened. Now, the, the whole environment was transformed because of prayer. Not just prayer alone, but you see, that is the key. The key, the key, the key. Prayer is the key. It helps to open doors. Now, I want to take you again to Luke chapter 22. Luke 
Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Let's take a look at verse 39 down. And he came out. And he came out and went as he was uh, on to the, to the Mount of Olive. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the, at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Another reason again of prayer is that so we don't fall into temptation, as you can see Christ telling them. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and knelt down and prayed. You see, Christ spent time with the Father. Each time after he ministers or before he ministers, he takes time out to pray. He, take, he took time out to pray. Now, what happened in here is that he withdrew from them as he prepared for his death and went up a stone through and then knelt down and prayed, took time to pray. People say you don't have to pray that much. You just pray and then you go. I, I've heard a lot of ministers tell me that. But I'll tell you what, prayer is the key. I spend time in prayer. I, I love prayer. I love it because it, 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 helps to, it helps me in so many ways. Not help God because God does not need my help. My prayer cannot help God. My prayer helps me. As you can see, that's what Christ did. He uses a prayer from time to time. And when he comes out, out of that closet, after fellowshipping with the Father, after talking with the Father, after conversing with the Father, when he comes out, miracles, signs, and wonders occur. So prayer is a way of conversing with the Father, a way of, of, of you know, talking to the Father. Now, let's see what happened here. Um, uh, okay. And he said, <laughs> and we draw a stone, okay. Saying, Father, let's go to verse, uh, verse 41. We already got verse 41, verse 44 now. And being in an agony, he prayed most earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Could you imagine that? He took time in prayer. Though he was God, he prayed so much so that behold, what happened in there is that he prayed so much so that sweat were coming out of him. And the drop of the sweat was, was like stones. So that is how much time the, our Heavenly Father spent with prayer. So can you imagine? Now, But if you look down, you see, so don't, don't be worried too much if you're, so, if you're not a prayerful one. <laughs> the apostles were the same. They were relying on Jesus every single time of the way. But guess what? If after this broadcast today, you can change your life around. Prayer should be a lifestyle. And fasting should be a lifestyle. For every believer, you spend time with God along with your family. And um, let, let, let go to verse 45. And when he rose up from prayer... And was come to his, uh, his disciple, he found them sleeping for sorrow. <laughs> Can you imagine? Christ is about to leave. He, he called his apostles, come with me, let's go pray so I can gather some strength. And then so I can go through what I'm about to go through. Number one, they don't understand what Jesus was talking about. Number two, when they got in there, instead of, you know, uh, helping Jesus, they were actually sleeping. And uh, and said, Unto them, Jesus now said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he was yes, yes speaking, the multitude came in with Judas Cariot. So you see, what is happening in here is that, you know, prayer is the key. It's the key. It's the key. So as you can see, and um, so if you are not a prayerful type, you know, you need to spend time in prayer. Spend time with the Lord in prayer. You know, if you look at the book of James, James chapter, chapter 5, verse uh, 13. You see what the Lord is saying here. James, in the book of James, Chapter 5, 
Let's take a look at it. Chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise, raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Can you imagine that? That is verse 15. Let's, let's look at verse 13. If any man, if any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing uh, psalms. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in, in the name of Jesus. You see, so, so you can see. Now, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. Prayer of the righteous availeth much. So the thing is that it's important that we need to key into prayer. Prayer is the key. Is the key. I remember also, let me give you another testimony. I was, when I, when I, get, to, um, when I get to London, I told you a story about how I, get to, I got to London. You know, while I was inside the, the, the cubicle, inside the train, you know, teaching the word inside the little cubicle because I, I, witnessing again is another thing I pick as lifestyle, witnessing to people about Christ. I love doing it. Now, as I was witnessing to them, reading the word of God and, and, and teaching in that cubicle, I met a man from the U.S. I was coming from Austria to London, and I spoke with the man and asked him where he was from. He said, from the U.S., and I said, I'm from Nigeria. I just finished my bachelor's degree in Austria, coming out of Austria to London on a holiday. And then he told me that uh, he lives in the state, and I told him I want to come to the state one day. He gave me his phone number, and that's how... He invited me to come to the States. Now, when after I got my visa to go to the States and I go to London, started to, to get ready to, uh, to come to, to the U.S. as I begin to walk to, to save money for tickets. Two things I want to tell you about, some two testimonies. Number one was that the time was getting so close that my, my visa was getting, was getting to begin to expire on me because I haven't got enough money yet for the ticket. I was troubled, and I started praying, God, help me. Then the Lord revealed to me that I should go to the embassy in London, the American embassy in London. Very unusual. If you, if you live in Austria, you can only get visa to the U.S. in Austria. As at that time. Now, you cannot go to London on a holiday and go to the British embassy, uh, the American embassy in London to get a visa. But what prayer can do is it does the, the miraculous things. The things that you don't expect, that's what it does. Then, then what happened in this case is that after I prayed, the Lord told me to go. I listened to the voice of the Lord. I went down there straight to the embassy. He told me what to tell them. I did. And they gave me a visa. You see, the, the same thing, let, let, let's look at the, the life of Elizabeth. Elizabeth was committed to the Lord with Zechariah. They were very committed in what they do for the Lord. They were righteous people, people who worked extremely hard, who were committed to the Lord because they gave their life to Christ. Therefore, God has also imputed righteousness, his righteousness in them. Now, they were in need of something, not because they needed the thing, and that is why they were committed. They were not committed because they needed anything from God. They were committed to God because they think it's the right thing to do. In the process of doing the right thing, God give us the right things. The things we don't even ask for, he give them to us. What they were doing is that as they were taking care of things in the house of the Lord, taking care of people because the man was a priest, the Lord visited them, saw their heart, their heart desire. They have sought the Lord for so many years and they have actually given up because at that age they could not have children. But the Lord saw the, their requisition that the Lord visited them and the Lord spoke to them and the Lord said unto Zechariah that I have heard your prayers. Your prayers have come to me and I've, I've heard your prayers. Your prayers have been accepted in my sight. <laughs> and behold, thou shalt have a child. And his name shall be called John. 
Zachariah was doubting because he said, my wife is taking in age. I myself am old and we can no longer have children. And, and the angel said, well, look, I, I sat at the right hand of God in heaven and have been sent to give you the good, this good news that that, your, that, 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 that that wife will conceive and have a child. And he went out. But go, guess what? What happened there? Is that because they were committed, a lot of us are not coming. When it comes to a prayer section, people are no longer involved in the church. People run away from prayer. They are so much involved in the word and they get away from prayer. They are so much involved in the one day they don't commit to the word of God. When it comes to, to the word of God, sitting there and teaching the word of God, they are not committed to it. They walk away from that. They, they have, I'm here to tell you that in the process of committing yourself to the things of the Lord, Lord, how he will meet your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's what happens to Zechariah. You know? So the thing is that God is able and there's nothing he cannot do. Today I'm here to, I, I, I just want to tell you that if you have not given your life to Christ, if you are lacking in that prayer, in that area of prayer, your life, you, 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 are, not, uh, you are not committed to praying, today is your day. Today is your day. Repent of it and, and begin now to get down in prayer. You will see the difference in your life. Prayer and fasting. It does a lot, a lot. If you, your church, you're not used to praying, you just come and then uh, they just teach the word of God, which is great. That's the foundation of everything. You need to key into prayer. You need to set apart the prayer section. Uh, you know, intersects us. Prayer intercessors. us. People who, who carries the church on your behalf. When the church, when people are going through a whole lot of things. You are a pastor. There's a lot of people going through a lot of things. And God, God intent for us is to shepherd the sheep. And to shepherd the sheep means that to commit them before God. Because God is the greatest shepherd. He's the one that can shepherd his sheep. And if you do not commit them before God. If you just only to counseling with the word. Uh, you, you know, you can just do it alone you got to commit them before God that is where you need prayer intercessors that's why you need time to set time apart for prayer where lives will be touched in such a way you, you, you write down all the list of whatever they're going through and begin to put prayer intercessors in sections and they'll begin to pray for their needs and you'll see results results and wonderful I mean it's, it's, God is just wonderful in the way he do things so now if you have not not really keen in that area in your life today is the day Spend some time with the Lord and see what the Lord can do. A prayer for life, you know, is nothing as good as a prayer for life. It's wonderful. As you read the word of God, you know, make sure you ignite, ignite it with a prayer. Prayer is the key to everything. You know, um, so this is biblical talk, you know, giving you the word today. Uh, by evangelist Jesse Ogunekaro, you know, um, uh, evangelist Dr. Jesse Ogunekaro. I want to tell you a few things today that uh, if you need any time ever need prayers, you can call us. And the number is, uh, we, we have prayer line every Saturday and Sunday. From on Saturday from the hour of 9 through 10. And on Sunday, 9 p.m. through 10. And on Sunday, the hour of 8 p.m. through 9 o'clock. And the number is 605-475-4810. Again, 605-475-4810. Access code is uh, 506-967 and a pound sign. 506-967 and a pound sign. Now you can visit us on our website at any time. And uh, if you find this, uh, this uh, broadcast uh, uh, interesting and God has taught you something through this broadcast, you can always make a comment there, you know, a testimony there as to what God is doing in your life. Uh, and uh, and that, in that case, you can uh, try us at www.kingdombasedministry.org. Visit us at www.kingdombasedministry.org. Today, I want, just want to pray for everyone. If you have any pain in your body and any disease in your body, I want you to just touch the TV right now. Begin to touch the TV because God is about to do something in your life. Touch, I believe 
Believe and touch the TV and see what God is about to do in your life. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and I commit before thee all those who are going through different circumstances and problems right now. Those who are sick in their body, who have any form of diseases in their body right now. Body pain, I decree that God, you should destroy every body pain in their body right now. Every pain in their body, the demon of pain, I want you to, to go right now. You know, those who have headache, just put hand in your, your, head, your head right now. Put hand in your head right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, those who have headache, who are touching the TV right now, who are believing in you right now, I decree that, that the power of God should come upon them and every headache, hey, every disease, headache, should be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Those who have tumor, oh, tumor should, should melt away in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I have those who have cancer, cancer should Get it should be should be erased out of the system in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who have uh, any kind of disease, even AIDS, I decree that God should remove it out of the body right now. Those who have problem in their stomach or every any part of their any part of their body, Father, take control right now. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing right now. We praise your name. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name. I cannot uh, close this broadcast by. Uh, just like that, without inviting you. If you have not given your life to Christ, today is the day. You know, people have choices, just like people have choices every day, of either going to work or not going to work, of either go, going to the grocery store and pick up whatever you like in the grocery store. So also, in the kingdom, there are two choices. A choice of life and a choice, a choice of uh, damnation. You know, and, and uh, choose one this day. You know, if you have not given your life to Christ, do so now so that your address will be changed and will be turned to everlasting life. You know, life everlasting. Amen. God bless you. And you, you all have a wonderful day. Good day. Splendor of